Well, good afternoon, family. It's good to be here today and to good, good to see all of you. I've got some of my props today. Well, this week we celebrated Valentine's Day. Um, I know America celebrated Valentine's Day, but I also learned recently that Valentine's Day is also celebrated all around the world. Um, did everyone have a good Valentine's Day? Yes. Maybe so. No. Yeah, David had a good one. I, I, I had a good one. I, oh, good, good. Terry, Terry had a good one. Um, uh, yeah, I, I was uh, pleasantly surprised a Thursday morning to wake up to roses on my dining table. Uh, uh, and I was surprised because Stephen leaves at like 6.15 in the morning. Um, so I was like, did you go to Trader Joe's at six? I don't even know what time Trader Joe's opens. And so I, and then I, I, I learned that he went the night before and, and stuffed it in the garage somewhere. And, and, and then, ran, oh, we ran over back to the garage Thursday morning and, and put it on the dining table. So um, I, I, I'm sorry if December your Valentine's Day wasn't as, 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 as pleasant as mine. But. <laughs> Um, so yeah, countries all over the world celebrate Valentine's Day, um, sometimes on, on different times uh, of the year. Move this here. Um, and I just kind of wanted to give everyone a little bit of a like a fun fun fact on on how other countries celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, so Japan, if Stephen, I hope I'm not blocking a lot of people, but. Um, so Japan and several other Eastern Asian countries um, is actually the opposite of what's typically done in America. Usually guys are the ones, that, or the boyfriends, or guy friends are expected to buy the chocolates and the big teddy bear and the gift and stuff. But actually in Japan and several other Eastern Asian countries, uh, women, women are the ones who give men gifts of chocolate. Um, and then one month later, on what's, no, what's known as White Day, uh, men are the ones who give various gifts and white chocolate uh, to the women. So typically, like women are the ones who give the men first, and then in hopes of a month later, what kind of like return? Uh, do it, in, do it in return, and much more because it's not just the chocolate; it's like other gifts and stuff, which I will not mention. Um, <laughs> and then in the Philippines, which I actually was not, I was like, I'm well, I wasn't, I didn't grow up in the Philippines, but I didn't know about this. Um, so the way they celebrate Valentine's Day is they have huge public wedding ceremonies um, where hundreds of couples get married at the same time, with, apparently with like free flowers and cake, which is pro and, and maybe free, what do you say Stephen, free rings too? Sometimes free rings, which is an incentive. I personally would not want to be married with a hundred, hundreds of other couples on staring the same anniversary um, my mom had a double wedding and she told me never to do that so um, yeah um, and in Wales um, on January 25 is actually when they celebrate their Valentine's Day uh, which is called Saint Saint Duin Wednesday uh, where couples will actually carve intricate wooden spoons and exchange them uh, Wales are very known for their passionate singing and um, just their passion for one another, um, so they carve these really beautiful, um, intricate wooden spoons and they exchange them. And in Bulgaria, it's called Winemaker's Day, which is, I, I guess for a lot of people, an excuse to just drink a lot of wine. Um, so couples celebrate by drinking a glass or two of wine together, with heavy quotes on the glass or two, or just drink a lot of wine together and, 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 and be married. So. So it looks like in America, as well as other countries, there's a day or two throughout the year where um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, they celebrate a friendship or, or love for one another. And I was wondering, what, it, what would it look like if not just one day out of the year I was intentional or my husband or, or boyfriend or whatever was intentional about being affectionate or loving to me. But that was every day. And if you've been married for 50 plus years, you know what that's like. <laughs> Having to, to love unconditionally every day. What would it look like if we knew every single day that we were loved 
and we loved others around us? What would it look like if every single day we knew that we were loved and that we loved others around us? Do we live life knowing we are loved? Do I live my life knowing that I am loved? Do you live your life knowing you're loved? As I was uh, praying uh, for this message this week, I finally got an epiphany from, from God. Uh, when was, I think it was Friday night. Uh, I got a poem in the mail from Judy Young. She's not here right now. Um, but she was just personally wanted to share this poem with me. And it's called Reflections. And throughout the poem, um, Judy j just reflects personally on how she's reminded of God's love just by what she sees around her. Um, she says, she starts off the poem by saying, I see you in the reflections at the water's edge. There you are sharing your creation with me. She says that she sees reflections of God in cracks or crevices where time and wind have etched your splendor. She, she sees reflection of God in hearing the whisper and gentleness of a breeze, the stillness of the night. She sees God in the smiles and laughter of children and those whose faces are etched with time, and also young adults who desire to have God at the, at, at the center of their lives. All are reflections of your creation, your love, Judy says. And then she continues, in the fierceness of the storms of life, I remember your promise and that you will never leave me nor forsake me. Once again, I am assured that you are here and I feel that blessed peace. Spring's sweet fragrance, a smile of summer rain, autumn's golden glory, winter's serenity, in all their beauty cannot compare to what awaits us in your kingdom. And then she ends by saying, faith, family, and friends are all reflections of the loving creator you are, God. We are loved, as she puts ex three exclamation points. And then at, very, at the very bottom of the poem, uh, Judy puts, uh, place John, 1 John 4.16, which is uh, the main scripture for today. So we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. So she says, we are loved. And, and when, she's, when I read Faith, Family, and Friends, it's just so interesting because that's exactly what's on my placemat. <laughs> Um, my, my mom got us placemats for, well, one of many things, um, for our, just our, Stephen and my starting off. And I said, how cool is that? Like, that faith, family, and friends would be on a placemat. What do you put on a placemat? Like, what's the purpose of it? Or you put on your dining table. And what do you do around your dining table? You sh you sh yeah, you share meals together. You share time together. You break bread together. So I was just like, oh, thank you, Mom, and thank you, God, uh, for reminding me that faith, family, and friends are shared. And, and, and those are one of the uh, ways that we're reminded of God's love for us. So 1 John 4, 16, we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. So the title of my message today is, is Living Loved. And my purpose is not to share, this is three, the three best ways on how you can live loved. It's not easy uh, trying to live loved. I, I was particularly struggling with it this week. I'm here to tell you that living a life, knowing you are loved every single day, is not easy. And, and we're gonna, we, we often forget that we're loved, but that's okay. But I'm here to share with you what can happen when we do live into that truth. What happens when we do live into our true identity as, as loved brothers and sisters, as loved children of God? What can happen? Because each and every one of us relates with God very differently. Um, so for example, I, I relate with God mostly through, through nature. And that's, that's how I'm reminded of, of, of how I'm loved. But each and every one of us is on a journey right now. And how we're going to get there is going to take a lifetime. Uh, living loved takes this whole entire life. 
and that and that's okay. Like it, that's okay. We're we're all struggling, and the struggle is very real. But what matters is that we're not doing this alone. So when I read Judy's poem, I was reminded of this pamphlet that I got um, for Mother's Day a couple years ago, and it was titled "Living Loved." And the title of that really struck me because I thought I want to live loved. I mean, I I, I know that I was I, I mean I was raised in a very loving family. Um, I'm part of a church family where I know I'm loved. But what challenged me was why is it that every day I tend to forget that? It's like I know intellectually that I that I'm loved. Like I know God loves me. I, I have heard it all my life. Why am I not living like that? Why, why, why do the choices that I, why do I continue to worry and have anxiety? And so in the first, in the first part of, of, of the Living Love pamphlet, it starts with God. God, because God is the giver of love, right? And to understand God's love, we need to start in the right place. Not in our own hearts. Not in our, not in our experiences of love. But, but God's. But God, Jeremiah 31, verse 3, God says, I have loved thee. I have loved you with an everlasting love. And I'll read it with, um, from New Living Translation as well. Long ago, the Lord, long ago, God, Yahweh, said to Israel, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. So in other words, God's saying, I love you because that's what I do. I love you because that's who I am. God loves you. God loves because God loves. Even before we were even created, God just loves. So before our Heavenly Father created the universe, He had us in mind. He held us in His heart. And before time began, our Savior Jesus Christ committed himself to die for the unbelief and other sins he knew that we would commit. And for all eternity, the Holy Spirit knew exactly how he would gift each of us for his service, encouraging and strengthening us to serve. Now, one of the reasons uh, a sermon like this or, or the topic of love is so hard to get is because in our culture and many cultures around the world, Love is a very broad term. It can be very vague and ambiguous and have different meanings. And oftentimes, the meaning of love in our minds does not align with the meaning of love in God's mind. So I'm going to show a quick video, about five minutes long. Um, it is a word study from the Bible Project. Um, and one of the things that they say for the introduction for this video is that the word love is one of the sloppiest words in our language, especially in our English language. You say love, it's like, oh, I love that movie. That new movie was so awesome. I love it. Oh, I love my grandma. But you probably shouldn't love your grandma the way you love that movie or the way you love different foods, right? Otherwise, your grandma would feel pretty, pretty bad. Um, so the word love is one of the sloppiest words in our language, and it primarily refers to a feeling. Love primarily refers to an emotion um, that happens to a person, right? Like, like Stephen and I fell in love, right? Is, is that just love? Like when you when you when you fall in love with someone. But in the New Testament, love refers to a way of treating people that was defined by Jesus Himself. Jesus was and is the person of love, not just the personification, but the person of love, which is basically, as we see in Jesus' life, seeking the well-being of others regardless of how they respond. So the love that we see and witness in the New Testament, or the New Testament love that is revealed to us by and in Jesus Christ, is seeking the well-being of others regardless of how they respond. And that is revolutionary, almost unthought of in, it, in our very selfish culture. But yeah, so we'll just uh, show the video of 
what agape love means, particularly uh, revealed to us in the New Testament. Right, so I'm just going to do a little plug-in for Bible Project. I've grown a lot just by watching these videos, listening to John Collins and Tim Mackey's podcast. Um, I know uh, Tim Mackey's a pastor at a Door of Hope in uh, Portland, Oregon. So um, if you'd like to learn more about the Bible Project, just, just go to Bible Project. I love how Pastor Tim ends the video by saying how at the center of the universe is a God overflowing with love for his people and his creation. I love how he ends it by saying, the purpose of human existence is to receive this love that is the heartbeat of, of our universe that has come to us in the person of Jesus himself, who is very much God, but very much human at the same time. And then to give this love back out to others, not just to receive and receive and receive, but that this love overflows so much in us that we give it back to others, creating an ecosystem of others-focused, self-giving love. What we witness in that video is just a taste of what it would look like or what it can look like for us to live loved for us to live knowing that we are loved by the God of the universe. And I'll be honest, it's not, it is not easy for me to accept that I am loved. Um, even though I, I know I know it, I, I, I've studied it, I've heard it all my life growing up in the church, that God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the God who loves me fully, who, who knows me fully knows me fully to the, to the depths of my brokenness and still loves me anyway, still loves me unfailingly. As the psalmist says in um, Psalm 139, Psalm 139, verses 1 to 2, here, here Psalm, David says, O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know everything about me. You know when I sit down, or stand up. You know my every thought, even when, I, when I'm far away. So when we live loved, we love. Loved, we serve. Loved, we live for Jesus, the one who died for us and rose again. And in, in the second part of the, cha the, the pamphlet that, that I told you about, the second point in that, in that pamphlet is me, the one that God loves. So for example, it's easy to love a toddler when she's lying, sleeping with a little teddy bear tucked under her chin. It's so easy to love her because she's so cute and not doing anything. But then it's easy to lose our temper the next morning when that same cute little toddler says, no, and sweeps her breakfast onto the floor. It might be Maddox or Mason <laughs> in, in, in that case. You know, it, it seems so easy to, to love. And, and, and oftentimes that's how I look at myself. Like, you know, I, I, I'm capable of, of being loved when, when, I'm, when I'm thinking well of others, when I'm, when I'm serving the homeless, um, when, when I'm being nice to people. But I don't really think I'm worthy of being loved when, when I, I start to worry about tomorrow or... I, I start thinking, I don't really know if I want to forgive that person because they hurt me so bad. I feel, I feel like that, uh, when I start acting like that toddler, I don't feel worthy of God's love. So when we're on our best behavior or wearing our, our Sunday shoes, for example, so to speak, we, we can readily trick ourselves into thinking we're, we're quite lovable, right? At least, at least I, I can fall into that trap. But our Lord knows the truth and still he goes on loving and forgiving and that while we were still his enemies God died for us and God God loves me I have a lot of trouble <laughs> accepting this truth that that God still loves me and that God died for me I, I, I've never had anyone, I, I've never been in a situation where um, someone ran in front of a bullet to save my life. 
Um, I know my parents would die for me, uh, but that hasn't happened uh, yet, or I, I don't hope that that never has to happen. Um, I hope that no one I love ever tries to die for me. And yet, God, the God, the epicenter of this universe died for me? It just, it boggles my mind, and, and, and I hope it boggles your mind too. Um, because I often forget that I'm loved. Even though I'm continually reminded through nature or, or, or his creation around me. Uh, I want to share a few, uh, just a short story with you and, and a few pictures. Um, I was reminded of God's love for me when I got to watch the sunrise from 30,000 feet. Um, I, Stephen and I were, were flying to Cincinnati, Ohio. We were flying to the snow to go uh, out of sunny California to go to this uh, conference that I did not want to go to. I was, I was one. Of, I was. We were on the curriculum team. I was one of the speakers. We were both workshop leaders. I didn't. I didn't want to. I didn't want to go. And I kept on asking God. I was like a toddler, and I was saying like, Why do I have to go to this conference? I, why do I have to go to the snow and and like do your will, God? But I have to go to the snow to do this. Um, and I, and I, just, I, I wasn't, I had gotten probably about four hours of sleep and I was, I was, I had a tantrum. I, I was not happy. I was not a happy girl. Um, and as, uh, as we were, we lifted off, you showing? Oh yeah. So Southwest, yay. Um, it was just so beautiful. I can't believe this is in our backyard. This is in our backyard. So it's so, it's been so cold lately that there's actually like snow. On the on the mountains now, and and the sun was rising, and I, I could hear. I didn't have any music. Uh, I wasn't listening to any music at the time, but I could hear the hallelujah, or like the um, or I don't know, like the violins or the orchestra. I could hear the orchestra, and it was just so beautiful. I wanted to cry, um, and there was this little girl sitting behind me. She looks like she's about three years old, and as the sun was. Uh, peeking, started peeking over the, the mountaintops. Um, the light was shining so strongly on our windows. And she put her little hand on the window, and it was just so beautiful seeing this little girl's hand. It was as if God was, was reaching out to her, and she was reaching back. It was just so beautiful. If you could go to the, the next two photos, Stephen. Yeah, it was... Um, it's really beautiful. And in that, in that moment, as I was worrying about what was I going to speak on over the weekend, how am I going to stay warm over the weekend, are we going to survive this weekend, um, <laughs> or God just said, I love you. I love you. You, you know that, right? And I, I, I got you. I got this. I got this weekend. I know what you're going to say. I'm going to give you the words. When you speak... I love you so much, and I and it just it just brought brought me to tears, especially as as I saw that little girl reaching to the light. Uh, I I wish I could see the sunrise like that every single day, but th but that's not possible, unless I I get superpowers and I can fly. That would be awesome. Um, but it. I want to know that I'm loved that much every single day without having to watch the sunrise at 30,000 feet. <laughs> and it, just, it reminded me of, of, uh, of Psalm 8, which we, we sang about today. And I'm a friend of God. Who am I that you're mindful of me, God? Who am I? Who am I that, that, that you would even like, think to love me, let alone die for me? I, I often like read that scripture saying, who am I? Instead of saying, who am I? Right? This emphasis, instead of who am I, God? I, I'm just like nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm your enemy. But who am I, really, to be worthy of such of love and beauty and unconditional faithfulness, God? And so the psalm, uh, psalmist uh, David in Psalm 8, he said, O Lord, O Lord, the majesty of your name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. And he's 
back then you could see there's there's no light pollution so you could see the stars all the constellations and their beauty and splendor right and he continues you have taught children and nursing infants to give you praise even they silenced your enemies who were seeking revenge verse 3 when i look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers the moon and the stars you have set in place what are mortals that you should think of us? Mere humans that you should even care about us. And so at this point, David is having, I guess what you call um, healthy humility. I guess he's, he's really humbled by, by the, his position, right? But then he continues on in verse 5. What does he say? For God, you made us a little lower than the angels, or, or lower than, than the spiritual beings. And you crowned us with glory and honor. You put us in charge of everything you made, giving us authority over all things, the sheep and the cattle and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims in the ocean currents. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, your, the majesty of your name fills the earth. And when he's talking about you gave us authority over all things, he's going back to the beginning. He's going back to Genesis, when God created us, Adam, which in Hebrew means dirt, or it sound, sounds like the, the Hebrew word for dirt, Adam. We came from the dirt, and yet we're still a little lower than the, than, than the spiritual beings or, or God himself. And he put us in charge of everything on this earth. Who are we? What, who, what are we that we should be loved by this God? In God's perspective, he's given us value. You are important. You matter. Your life matters. And he's given you honor and glory. Are you living into that? Are you aware of that? This week, I, I, for some reason, it was, and it was the day before Valentine's Day, I was just feeling particularly depressed. Um, and... The end of Psalm 139 kept coming to my mind. Um, Psalm 139. Because I, I, I could, there's a point where you just don't really, or I just don't really understand what I'm feeling anymore, or why I'm feeling, what, what, what thought, why am I thinking these thoughts? And, I, and, I, and I, I'm so grateful that God, I'm sorry, Stephen, um, God knows what I'm going to say before. Even God knows my thoughts more than more than Stephen knows my thoughts. Uh, you know, it's like you may love you, your your spouse so much, but you just wish that they knew what you were thinking. And I'm thinking, I'm just so glad that Jesus, at least Jesus knows what I'm thinking. Um, he knows He knows why I'm feeling what I'm feeling. Um, and so I just said Psalm Psalm 139 verses 23 to 24 just was ringing out in my head. Search me, O God. Search me. I don't know, I'm going crazy over here. Search me, I'm right here. Know my heart. Test me. Know my thoughts. You know my thoughts and why I'm thinking. Point out anything in me that, that is against your will or that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Because in eternity, I'm not going to be thinking about like this anymore. In eternity, there's no worry or anxiety or fear. We don't know what that like, what, what that's like. I want I want that life. I want that type of eternal life where I have no more fear or anxiety or worry. And so I posted this on my I have the Bible app on my phone um, to remind me that, that I'm loved. Um, Stephen if you could if you could show that really quick. Because this is I, so I just I just posted um, search me oh God know my heart Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path, path of everlasting life. And at that moment, as I was praying and, and, and reading scripture to be reminded that I'm loved, I was reminded that loved, we love. When we're loved, we serve. Loved, we live for Jesus, the one who died for us and rose again. And we are loved forever. And again in the pamphlet 
uh, the author gives, gives an example of someone saying, you, you crossed the line, you crossed the line. Because sometimes we think, yes, okay, God loves me, uh, I'm loved forever, but what if I do X, Y, Z? Am I still going to be loved? You cross the line. So the fourth grader, for example, who hears these words, knows that she's lost screen time for, the, for at least a week. You can't go on your phone or computer for at least a week. You cross the line. The employee who hears this, th these words knows that she's going to be looking for another job. You cross the line. But does God say that to us? Does God say that to us? Given the way our world works, we're really tempted to worry that at some point we will cross a line and that our Savior will then give up on us. Does God really give up on us? No. God's love for us in Jesus is forever. It's a forever kind of love that we can't even fathom. He renews his faithful mercies toward us each and every day. And so the life that we're called to live is a life lived in love. Because a life lived in love is a life lived in hope. Hope knowing that, that the storms of this life are not forever. And what we're going through at this moment in time is nothing compared to the glory and the awesomeness that is waiting for us. That is forever. Loved, we love. Loved, we serve. And loved, we live for Jesus, the one who died for us and rose again for us. And living loved is an amazing adventure. It's a lifestyle packed with meaning and purpose. Living loved is a glorious adventure packed with meaning and joy and purpose. Which is why we can say, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? As the Apostle Paul says in Romans 8, starting at verse 35. It's also on your bulletins today. What can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who saved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels or demons, anything in the spiritual realm or in the physical realm, present or the future, nor anything in time or powers, neither height nor depth, anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And when we, get, we, 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 when we begin to live that out, when we begin to live knowing we are loved, we love, we serve, we live for Jesus. And we live with Jesus. And so I, I, I would like to challenge everyone today um, for our, when we have our potluck to one of the ways that we can love on one another is to get to know each other, specific, uh, particularly over a meal. Because when you break bread together, that, that's already the common denominator and, and you can, Start sharing your lives together, sharing how, how, you, how your week was. And so I want to challenge each and every one of us today, including myself, to sit with someone at the potluck that, that you don't really, are, are not usually uh, used to sitting next to. Um, and I'm, I'm talking to the younger folks too. Um, I know it's hard, it's hard to get out of your comfort zone, but this is how we can start to live love, right? I mean, if, if, the, church, if the church can do it, as broken as we are, that, that's then the, the world will know that we are from God. So let's, let's, let's start getting to know one another more, uh, um, young, young and old and, and in between, um, dur during our potluck meals. So I challenge everyone um, starting, starting this week, um, if that's okay. That way we, we know we, can, we are living out our mission, which is to love God, Love others and serve the world. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, and Spirit, we just thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love, for, for your agape love um, that is unconditional. And thank you that, that, God, you loved us first. And 
Lord, I, I pray for, for any and everyone uh, here who, who may be struggling with this, um, including me, who is just grappling or struggling with, with the idea of, of knowing that they're loved or, or feeling loved, God. Um, help us on this journey, uh, this lifestyle of, of living loved, living um, into our true identity. Um, help us to forgive one another, God. Help us to serve one another, to, to, to grow, to get out of our comfort zones, God. Um, give us your courage and your peace and your hope, um, knowing that even the struggles that we have in this life are nothing compared to the amazing glory that you're going to give us. And it's going to be fun, God. Uh, eternity life with you is, is fun. Help us to, to remember that, God, and, and, and know that whatever we go through right now, you're, we're not going through it alone. You'll never leave us nor forsake us, God. We just thank you so much um, that you loved us first. Thank you in all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.